Please turn your Bibles with me over to the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 4. You know, I get into a special week like this, and normally I would, you know, ministers would talk about triumphal entry and um, what the word Hosanna means. But not us. We're going to carry on in 1 John. Actually, it ties in nicely to what we're going to look at this morning. 1 John chapter 4. We're going to start reading in verse 19. We love because He first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Loving and lying. Sometimes we lie. And John is saying that there's some people in Asia Minor who are lying. People who are teachers in this community, in this spiritual community. People who say they love God, but they don't love the brothers. And John has some real nice things to say about that. They're liars. They're liars. Now, he's, also, he's talked about liars already. He's, he's talked about the evil one already. And so you should be putting this all together in your mind that says, hmm, this is what John feels about these people. They're liars. Now, they wouldn't call themselves liars. They would say, I'm a, I'm a spiritual person. I love God. I love God. I love God. I love God. I'm a, I'm, I'm a Christian. I love God. I love God. I love God. I love God. John says they're liars. And here's why. Because God has become flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. And God gave this special command on that night that He instituted the Lord's Supper that we call Monday, Thursday, Thursday night. And I want you to look at that. Turn over to the book of John, Gospel of John, in chapter 13. In chapter 13, in verse 1 it says, It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for Him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved His own who were in the world, He now showed them the full extent of of his love. And do you remember what he did? He tied a towel around them and washed their feet. But that was just the beginning. That wasn't the only thing that showed the full extent of his love. From there, he was betrayed. He was tried. He was beaten. And he was crucified. And he rose from the dead, showing them the full extent of his love. Right? During that time, he gives them a new <coughs> command. In that same chapter, he says, um, <coughs> verse 34, A new command I give you. Love one another. Well, it's not a new command. We were told in the Old Testament. Love your neighbor. But here's the new part. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. All men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. I love God. I love God. Just can't stand God's children. <laughs> then you're a liar. You're a liar. How can you say you love God whom you've not seen? When He told you, He commanded you to love each other the way that He loved you, 
And the brothers you have seen, you don't love them. Oh, yeah, okay, I guess I love first. Oh, yeah, there are. <coughs> you know, we lie about love. We, we have this terrible thing in the English language, but we, we love everything, right? We love God, we love our country, we love our dog, we love our neighbor, we love hot dogs, we love Easter egg hunts, we love flowers. We love, 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 we love. And we say things that are horrendous to each other and hurtful and mean and nasty and then tell each other, I love you. And maybe you grew up in a situation like that. Maybe your parents said mean, demeaning things to you and treated you awfully and said, no one will ever love you the way I love you. I do this because I love you. Those are lies. Those are lies. Turn me over to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to look at this because, no, not because it's a wedding, but we normally look at this. But because the Bible spells out for us what love is. So here, when you say I love you, are you saying that love is patient? Verse 4. If I am not patient with you, if I make you feel like you're just wasting my time, if I make you feel like you are just the biggest aggravation to me, and tell you that I love you, I'm lying. Love is patient. Love is kind. If I tell you that you are the worst human being that's ever walked the earth, that you are of no account, I like to hate that, you know, he's no account, that you're an idiot, a fool, <coughs> and then tell you that I love you, I'm lying. Do you understand? Because love is kind. Love does not envy. If I tell you that you don't deserve the things that you have, the relationships that you have, you don't deserve the job you have, you don't deserve the very breath you breathe because I should have it and you shouldn't, and then I tell you that I love you, I'm lying. You guys get it? Love does not envy. Love does not boast. If I tell you that no one will ever love you the way I love you, that you are so lucky to have a relationship with me, that I'm the best thing that ever possibly happened to you, and then tell you I love you, I'm lying. If I tell you everything that you've ever done wrong to me. First in alphabetical order. And then, just so you don't miss it, I tell you in chronological order, from the beginning to the end. And then tell you I love you. I'm lying. Because love does not keep a record of wrong. Okay, let's go on. Oh, love is not proud. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. If I treat you in those ways and tell you I'm, I love you, just ignore me. That is not love. That is a lie. If I delight in something that just is terrible that happens to you, 
You lose your job, and I can't help smiling about it. And then I tell you I love you. I'm lying. If I don't protect you, if I refuse to trust you, and then tell you that I love you, I'm lying. You get the idea? If I say I love God, and then treat you in any of those ways, I'm lying. Wow. Here's a new command I give you. You need to love each other the way that I loved you, Jesus said. And here's the way that Jesus loved them. Patient, kind, not rude. Not self seeking keeping no record of wrongs. Amen. Always open, always trusting, always persevering. That is love. And that's what we feel when we come to Jesus. And you know, it's what we should feel from each other. Amen. That is how people will know that we are disciples, that we are followers of Jesus. And so you can do all kinds of religious things. You can put bumper stickers on your car about how much you love Jesus and how much you love God. But you know what the proof of the pudding is? How you treat each other. Amen. Whether you feel loved, whether you make other people feel loved. In Asia Minor, there were some nasty liars. They looked like good religious people, though. They actually looked like they were pretty smart. They actually looked like they had some things going for them, and people were following them and listening to them. But they were teaching them not to love each other. Oh, you can love special people, like me. Oh, you can, you can love specific people, the ones that look like me and act like me and have the same color skin that I do and, 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 and live in the same area of town. And, but other, everybody... Eh. They love God. John just called them a liar to their face. Wow. Knowing what was going to happen, Jesus showed his disciples the full extent of his love. And part of that, he told them to do this. To remember. To remember that I have a body. I laid my life down for you. That I bled and died because you needed me to. And they told him, I got a new command for you guys. You love each other the way I love you. You make each other feel the way that I make you. so we remember. We do it every Sunday. There'll be, there'll be people doing it Thursday. Because, you know, that was the night before the Passover. And, and you know, we do it every, we do it every Sunday. Because we need to remember. And we need to remember that if we're not making each other feel loved, then we're lying if we say we're need to remember that. The new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. This is how the world will know. You're my disciples. <laughs> this is how they know. They, not because you are just so righteous. Not because you are so blessed. Not because you say these nice little cutesy things or sing beautiful songs. Not because you have nice buildings. Or not because that you know how to Put a service together, not because you build an outdoor chapel, or not. Be, this is how the world is going to know by how you make each other feel. That anybody comes through that door, they feel loved. Not because they're lovable, but because 
Remember? Remember how he started back there in 1 John? 1 John chapter 4. He says, that's what it takes. Exactly what he says. We love because he first loved us. Someone walks to that door. We love them because <coughs> we feel loved by God. They don't have to be worthy of it. They don't even have to reciprocate. They don't have to make us feel loved. We will love them. No, we're liars. We're a whole congregation of liars. I don't believe in liars. I feel loved by you. And I know you feel loved by each other enough to come out here this morning. And I know we have a very pleasant time together. But that's not what brings you. What brings you is the relationships with each other. And, and if you get up at 7 o'clock to get down here, you say, the, the reason is not because, you know, you like to watch the sun rise. It's because you love to be together. This is what God does for us. And this is what He wants you to feel all week long. When we talk about the special week and, and all the events going up, He wants you to feel loved. That's what He wants you to feel. And he wants people that don't know him to see that you feel loved by other believers. And that they can feel loved. That's what he wants. And that's what we want this morning as we take the Lord's Supper. Not to be beat up, but to feel loved because all the time we start clean. All the time we have the blood of Christ. We have no record of wrongs. And if we've messed up this week, and if we've messed up with each other, we're clean. We're whole. We are capable of love because of what Jesus has done for us.